What's going on, football fans? It's your boy Lolo. I'm with Mark. And hey, what's we, up, folks? We are out at Legends Bar right now, home of the Football Factory. And if you don't know what the Football Factory is, then you do not you do not know football in New York City. Not at all. Um, so the Football Factory is actually downstairs. But since we need a little bit of Wi-Fi to be going live, we're we're up here. We're at the uh, we're at the top of the summit. The, yeah. the Football Factory. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you oh, so much. Fantastic. Oh man, right, look at this. A turkey club going on. And we're in a bar and we're getting served food. This the, feels good. The rules here. Uh, we, we, get, hey, we get another round. Yeah. We're going to get another round. Uh, so in order to be able to be in the bar, drinking, watching football, you do have to order some food. You do got to be eating. Mm. At the table, we are allowed to pull our masks down. So we're going to pull our masks down for right now. Oh my God, Leeds United, where you at, son? Mm. I told you. Mm. I told you, I mean, I did call a 5-1 victory because Leeds United tend to demolish teams after they get demolished. And so, fantastic result. Uh, I'm just so happy in my fantasy team. I started uh, Bamford as my captain, Rafinha, and Stuart Dallas. Stuart Dallas as a defender, as a defender. So he gets a clean sheet. He gets a goal. I, I think he may have had a, an assist. It was fantastic. If I played fantasy, I'd know what you're talking about, but I have no idea. I barely know soccer in itself. I, in it's fact, such... I picked Tyler Roberts to score two goals today. Yeah, he, he did not. He, he had his chances. He did get the assist. No, no, no. Um, so we, we, unfortunately, I know a lot of our fans here are interested in what James Reeves has to say, but, uh, James is actually working today. So hopefully he's got this on in the background and we'll see some comments, but we have a very special guest for you. Um, we, we like to show as many different types of, of fans of the Premier League here in the U S as possible. So we're very lucky to have uh, a good, good guy right here named Kyle. He represents the Ohio Leeds or Leeds, Ohio. He's in Columbus, Ohio. He, he is trying to get the, the Leeds supporter group up and running and off the ground in Ohio. So um, thank you. Thank you. So uh, everybody go over to Leeds, Leeds, o Leeds, Ohio. Give them a like. Give them some support and support your, your boys across the sea. Ocean? No, the, across the, the country, across down the, the way, near the lakes. The Let's get him in here. Let's get him in here. Because if we're what's up, guys? excited, what's going cheers, on? Paul? Cheers, man. Cheers, cheers, cheers. I don't got a beer yet, but <laughs> cheers. Oh, you're on a yellow card already then. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm a yellow card. Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Director, he's got to get booked for there that. There we go. <laughs> a little early for me still. A little early for me still. Um, look, Sean Stewart says, I'd buy you a beer, but I don't have a clue how to. It's called Super Chat, my man. It's called Super Chat. You can Super Chat a beer over to him, and we'll all cheers. Indeed. Um, so I, I think in New York City, this costs about 9 bucks. so that's a $9 <laughs> Super Chat. It's going to get expensive. <laughs> but uh, Kyle, fantastic, brother. How do, how do you feel about this 3-0 win? Because at halftime... At halftime, I was a little like, ah, fuck, here we go. <laughs> no, absolutely buzzing. That was, a, that was a huge game going into that. I think with the fixtures coming up for Leeds and honestly is is kind of bare bones as they are right now with injuries. Um, really, really, really needed this one today. So absolutely buzzing on the result. First half, definitely got a little dicey. Second half, um, as we like to call it in, in the Leeds fanhood, we had Yorkshire Neymar take over in that second half with, with Rafinha. Um, I thought Stuart Dallas was amazing in that game. Um, we, I, I honestly compare him a lot to, to like a James Milner that was, you know, with Liverpool the last couple of years and you know, before he got a little older, but huge result needed that, um, giving me a little more confidence that, you know, we're going to stay around like eighth or ninth place this year and, and looking good, looking good. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's, sorry, I, I got sidetracked of what I was about to say. There's something you said there that, um, Completely fucking forgot. Uh, I'm, I'm, reading all, I'm reading all these uh, <laughs> these comments as well, even from Calvin. What's up, Calvin? Good Funny. day, you pansies. Thanks for joining uh, us, Calvin, even if it is for the moment. Call us whatever you want, Calvin, but we keep getting that view. That's an expensive beer, is that? Yes, it is. Uh, and it's you know, it's this ultra shit, too. So <laughs> cheers cheers to Leeds United, though. Cheers to Rafinha. Cheers to today. Stuart Dallas. Cheers to Patty Bamford. Uh, fantastic. Well, I was going to say something. I completely. I got to tell you, Kyle, I, I, I was a bit touched when um, 
uh, when, when Dallas scores his goal and he, he runs off to the side and grabs the jersey and then flips yep. it around and says Granny Val on a, a tribute to Calvin Phillips' uh, grandmother who passed away. Um, uh, yeah, I thought that was a real class act. Now, what did what did Rafina have on his T-shirt when he scores his goal? They didn't have the camera on it long enough to where I could pay attention. Yeah, it was kind of – I think it was in Portuguese, and I haven't seen on Twitter exactly what it was. Uh, it was kind of like faded out on top. But uh, mm -hmm, I'll, have to, yeah. I'll have to check and see what all that was about. But, yeah, I mean, I think Calvin Phillips means so much to this team. Um, when they didn't go up there a couple years ago, like he's had every opportunity to leave the club. Um, I think he, I mean, he's, a, he's a Leeds lad. He's had every opportunity to leave. So, oh, there you go. There you got go. a beer. Sean, 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 Sean brought you a beer. Cheers. Here's, the Here's the Sean. Yeah, we're, let's get a cheers on camera for you. You got nothing. I mean, you're going to get red carded, man. If you don't walk back there and get yourself a drink, you just won 3-0. <laughs> there you go. Leads, on, leads, 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 leads. Marching on together. Thank you so much, Sean Stewart. Here's to you. Um, I see you purchased in pounds, so I'm assuming you're, you're in England. Whenever we get over there, we'll have a proper pint with you. Uh, much much bigger than than this <laughs> this metal <laughs> bottle. I don't know what what exactly I'm drinking. He's playing nine pin over here. Um. So so let's uh, <clears throat> a serious question from Jason Robinson. Uh, where do you reckon we will finish? Where do I reckon you guys will finish? I uh, you know I've been I've been saying in in you have the possibility to finish. Seven is what I think. Um, I think there is a possibility to finish above Arsenal and Wolves, as Wayne is saying. Sure. I, I think anything can happen. What's up, Karen C? Good to see you. Uh, wish you guys were out at the bar with us. Uh, Karen C is a Patreon patron. She supports us day in, day out. Good videos, bad videos, win, and law, win or lose. Um, she really <laughs> represents that Leeds United spirit. Absolutely. But I say, there we go. I say, I know, I know Leeds. What's up, Paul? Hey, Paul. I, I think Leeds United can finish seventh, honestly, with the way the league is going up and down and up and down. People are beating people they shouldn't. People are losing to people they shouldn't. Look, I think you can finish as high as seventh, maybe sixth, but let's say in reality six seven. Six is a little stretch. Um, yeah. But, but you also have the possibility to end as low as like 13th. I, I think seven to thirteen is what I'm going to say for you guys. I don't think I'd go that high, and I don't think I'd go that low. I think between ten and twelve is what uh, what I think I would expect from Leeds. Uh, and I think I think Leeds, Wolves, and 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 Arsenal are just kind of kind of jockey for that 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 last position, you know, yeah. within there. Wait. Oh, okay. Not the within last the, position. Within, Not the last with, position. With, with, that belongs to Sheffield United. <laughs> that belongs to the blunts. Maybe West Brom. They, they Maybe blunted. West <laughs> so, uh, listen, uh, but before we get into the game uh, even more, Kyle has a very interesting story, uh, and I know our fans across the sea, people who live in Leeds, are always baffled as to why anyone outside of Leeds would, would support Leeds United. And um, Kyle, if you don't mind telling the story, I yep. think it's a very interesting story. Um, so we're, we're going to take a quick time out to let you tell your story. So listen up, guys, and we'll, we'll, get, to the, we'll get to all of the, the, the player the ratings and, the and all that stuff. But I think you guys should know this about Kyle because it's very different. It's not like he, he was just born in Leeds and, and became a Leeds United fan. You yeah. kind of got to work for your teams here. So, yes, you do. So let's hear what you got to say, Kyle. Yeah, so um, I wouldn't say that I really found Leeds. Leeds kind of found me, which is kind of a cool story of, of where everything came about. So um, I grew up in really rural Ohio, didn't grow up playing the sport, um, didn't really, really get into it, honestly, until college. And my best mate came over um, from England, played on our, on our soccer team um, in college, um, became really, really good friends. He's actually a Manchester United fan, so probably shouldn't say that a whole lot. But, uh, but he's from a little, little small town uh, about 20 minutes north of, of Leeds called Harrogate. It's a beautiful place. Um, I would say if you're ever in the area, go check it out. Um, it's an absolutely gorgeous place, little resort place. Um, so I kind of honestly became a Leeds fan through tragedy. I don't want to go super into detail, just out of respect of, of him and his family. Um, but uh, his dad actually passed away. Um, here in, in the States and nobody could kind of get over to be with his mom. 
um, while she was over here until we could kind of get her over to the comforts uh, to with her with her family over in England. Um, so I flew out to be with her um, and ended up kind of going over there um, after everything had kind of settled down around the holidays. And just his family and everybody, honestly, just welcomed me in with open arms, just the nicest people in the world. Um, from then, I was just a match made in heaven. Haven't been to Ellen Road yet. It's definitely on the bucket list. And obviously COVID is, has kind of impacted that quite a bit. But I've just on I've I've been fortunate enough to travel a lot um, through work and everything. I've never been to a place like Yorkshire, like Leeds, um, in general. I mean, it's it's not really that place that that's on everybody's destination list when they think of going to England. But I would definitely encourage everybody to check it out. Yorkshire has so so much to offer, and I've really just been um, really ingrained in kind of this Yorkshire culture just over the last couple of years. Um, and you know, I'll say this: if if you're from the Midwest, if you're if you're really from the states in general and looking for a team to kind of root for. The one thing that you'll really love to learn about Leeds is just everybody is so into the club. Um, it's not this bougie place. It's it's people really, really work hard for what they are or for what they have. Um, they are all about Yorkshire. If you've ever talked to anybody from Yorkshire, you'll know that they are absolutely obsessed with it. Um, and there's salt of the earth. I mean, literally our salt of the earth. Um, so, you know, I would encourage everybody to deep, take a little deeper dive into, into Leeds. Uh, and in New Yorkshire culture, if you're ever going over there, definitely check it out. Um, but it's it's a cool place. It means so much to me. Dude, that's fantastic, man. What what a fantastic, well, you know, a, a tragic story, but the things that, you know, fantastic on you to do that for your friend and then, like, to get this in return, this culture of Yorkshire. This yeah. is something, yeah. I mean, I, I told everybody I retired my Yorkshire cap when, <laughs> when Arsenal played Leeds out of respect, but, you know, Everybody knows, and they all make fun of me saying that that I'm a closet Leeds United fan. I, 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 Got to be. Everybody is. I do. He's, like, a, he's I, a closet Premier League <laughs> fan. Let's just break it down. That's why we do this. Um, we do this because we like football, not well, just one particular team. Yeah. <laughs> but we we got to get to these comments from Chris Sharp first of all. Chris Luft Sharp. Um, haha, we lost to both your teams, but who's laughing now? We leap from both your asses. Well, we've lappy, got lappy, two lappy, games. Lappy, and we all. each have a game in hand. No, no we don't. I don't. I don't. My team doesn't. That was their game oh, in hand. Shit. Yeah, it's right. the other way around, motherfucker. Yeah. No, uh, no. My theory, my theory is that the Premier League is just out to get our show. Um, <laughs> like the, we have all these Leeds United fans, and they're like, these guys in Brooklyn need to slow the fuck down. Uh, I'm gonna let Arsenal beat them, and I'm gonna let Wolves beat them, and I'm like, no, 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 no. no. Betty's tea room, let's go. Love the comment. Betty's tea place. room, go on there. But uh, but listen, yeah, Leeds United, it, it, you guys could end above Arsenal and above Wolves easily, um, because you guys are playing more consistent football than Arsenal and Leeds. You guys come out and you do your thing. Hey, Wolves. Arsenal and Wolves. What did I call you? You said Arsenal and Leeds. Arsenal and Wolves. So Leeds is playing better than Leeds. <laughs> they are some days. Sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes they are. <laughs> um, so Kyle, fantastic. So let's get to you, Kyle. Uh, lots of options here, but who is your man of the match for this match? I, I think it's I think it's got to go Rafinha just for the pure fact of I mean you just you just never know what you're going to get from Rafinha when he touches the ball. I mean just brings on. A little bit of brilliance, but I think I think Stuart Dallas has got to be in consideration too. I think Stuart Dallas is just kind of that does everything. If if you got a left back out, they're gonna throw him out there. If you got a right back out, central midfielder, he kind of does everything for the club. Um, so I mean, I think he he deserves a lot of praise. I thought he absolutely clamped down James Ward Prowse in the middle. Didn't really allow him to do anything. Um, so I mean, I, I I'm gonna probably lean Rafinha because I think he had a little more impact on the goals. But at the same time, Stuart Dallas was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, it looks like we're having power issues in the bar. It's not us. Oh, wow. That's crazy. We're not, we're not pulling <laughs> any power. Um, so, uh, so yeah, Rafinha, I mean, I feel like if even, even if you even if you don't watch the match and somebody asks you who's the man of the match, you could just go, uh, Rafinha, he yeah. played really well, yeah. right? It's because just, the you do a man on the street moment and ask the guy yeah, that's like ask, with ask the jackhammer is like, who's the man of the match? Uh, Rafina? He's he's so Gotta good. Be. I I was so mad that he didn't shoot that breakaway. Yeah. That I was like, well, how much closer are you trying to get? You have them all beat. And he went to center and then brilliant tackle. I think it was by Bednarak. No, it was uh, Ramu. 
uh, Romeo. 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 Yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. Perfect. But then yeah. Rafinha's on. I felt every asshole in Yorkshire clench <laughs> when Rafinha was was on the ground, just like no, 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 no. Um, so I'm so glad he got up and ended yeah. up having a fantastic yeah. match. Um, and yeah. and I think, uh, yeah, I'll man of the match, Rafinha. That's amazing. The biggest question to you guys, though. So other than maybe Manchester City, what team would Rafinha not start for in the league right now? I mean, just on a different level, in my opinion. Would he I, I would say he would probably not start over like a Mares at Manchester City, but who would who would not want him on their team? Where would he not start over? I mean, maybe Arsenal. I, mean, I think they got a lot of quality on a wing, but I, I can't. Yeah, but without Partey, they would take Rafinha in a minute. Yeah, uh, they don't play the same position anyway. Uh, I I think Rafinha would, with the season we had, we've had, even if he didn't start in the beginning of the season, he'd be playing every fucking match yeah. for Arsenal right yeah. now. Um, I think maybe Chelsea just because they're fucking weird. <laughs> and they, they have too many good players and they don't know how to nobody can doing. play. They don't know how to play as a team either. Yeah, so all. they would start him and he would score a goal and they're like, oh, that's not enough. And yeah. we're going to start fucking Giroud. Uh, so uh, I I don't know. Rafinha for me starts anywhere. Any, I, I think he should be starting for Brazil. Yeah. He just, look, he works harder than any other Brazilian. Uh, I can tell you right now. Um, because as good as he is on the ball, as good as he is as a winger, he tracks back. He plays defense. Uh, I gave him shit in the Everton game because Digne had him, or Luca Dean, Luca Digne, whatever his name is. Um, he had him, but you know, in the end, when you're complaining, one of your main at attackers is getting beat by an amazing attacking defender. So I think that was. That was more Rafinha trying, knowing that he needed to be attacking more and then getting burnt on Digne's, uh, on Lugadine's tracking back. Yeah. So, yeah. He's fantastic. I, th I keep, uh, I think Via Martin, uh, what's going on, man? Big up in Spain. He said Cooper had another great performance tonight. Cooper did had an have another great performance. Right alongside him, um, uh, Diego De La Rente. Uh, Diego Llorente, not, yeah, yeah. not a great start, but I think he got up to speed and he had a good second half. Um, exactly, he can play all around the pitch. He did not start great. I, I thought he was very... Um, he was very slow and mm. almost clumsy in the beginning, yeah. but yeah. by by the middle of the second first half and and the entire second half, your whole back end, the whole back end, just locked down. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's a makeshift back end right now too. I mean, you got to think of Llorente. Like he hasn't played in months. I mean, the guy honestly haven't hasn't been able to find his footing since he got in the team. Um, I mean, he got hurt kind of right away when he got brought in. I think we had big expectations from Robin Cock when he got brought in. And then, I mean, he looked a little bit all over the place at the beginning of the season and then just, you know, not be able to come back from injury. So this back line is makeshift. I understand that we, we let in a lot of opportunities because of how we play. But, I mean, Cooper's, again, the type of guy you want on your team because he's kind of do everything for the club. I mean, that's that's the thing I think is all, you know, coming back to the Yorkshire style play and how Bielsa fits this yeah. club so well. They buy into this, and everybody yeah, yeah. does everything for the team. So yeah, Cooper's yeah. not the most talented guy in the world. He's never going to be. He's not, you know, he doesn't have the quality of a lot of other center backs around around the league. But, you know, he put in – I thought he put in a good performance today. Urente excited me a lot because I think he's really versatile. Um, I think I, – I saw one of the comments. He's definitely really versatile. I think if you are in an emergency situation, you could put him at left back. I thought his distribution was really good today. I thought Pascal Stroik is, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I think, the center back of the future. I mean, I, I actually, I hate it when Bielsa starts in a defensive mid, um, <laughs> just personally, because I know it's going to be a bad performance and he's not going to be there. But at the same time, he's young, like he's developing. Um, and you got to think, too, I mean, the, the thing that I really am excited about with this team, you know, as the way this year has kind of been going where nobody's really had that training pitch time just because games are going so fast. I mean, to be able to kind of throw a different back line together, it seems like every different game. I mean, they're just scrambling at results, and it's awesome for what the future looks like, in my well, opinion. Listen, everybody talking good about your rent. Hey, look, you, you had an actual center back today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, Without Luke Ailing out there. It's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
You know, I, the, the thing about uh, Urente that, that I, I haven't really ever seen him play, right? And you had yep. mentioned he hadn't played for like a month. And it's been because of injuries. I understand why he gets hurt so much. He's like rail thin. He's like yeah. skinnier than this French fry. <laughs> I mean, like, I just thought the wind was going to like blow him over. He should have had a goal today, too. Super yeah, yeah, he could have had a goal today. Yeah, he could have. Uh, listen, guys, we got we got like 80 people watching right now. If you guys can make God sure, bless you all. Uh, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Show us some love. Let's let's get up to 100 likes at least and move on from there. Um, th thank you guys uh, very much for, for joining in, and I'm loving all the comments. Listen, we can't, we can't not mention uh, Granny Val uh, because – you saw, uh, who was it? The first one was, was uh, Dallas. Was, yeah, Sir Dallas. No, no. Stuart Dallas. Stuart Dallas, Dallas is the one that had the jersey. Um, this is a football club right here. This is a football club that lives and dies together. Um, not that, not trying to mention death, but uh, but here we go, Max. What's up, Max? Uh, Rip Granny Val. This is a team that they feel, they feel Calvin Phillips right now. He's mm -hmm. not on the pitch, and they, they feel him. <laughs> Karen's calling you out there, chips. Over here, they're fries, all right? <laughs> He's um, as narrow as this chip. <laughs> narrow uh, as this chip. Um, but uh, uh, what was I talking about? But yeah, you Granny can see. Val and being and a part like, of the team. I, I'm assuming Rafinha had something similar. Uh, I, I, I didn't catch it they didn't have it up on screen as much because they don't like to show it when they when the dudes take their shirts off i i think he probably got a whole yellow card program. for it but um but it, it was fantastic to show that support and imagine calvin phillips sitting at home right now uh wishing he could be on the pitch and seeing that i mean we, we already know that she's a big reason that he's still at the club and that he may never leave the club uh, so beautiful homage to Granny Val. Yes, Karen, so you said it well. So moving from there to um, not leaving the club, Rafinha. Somebody mentioned Rafinha has doubled or quadrupled his price tag already in one season. Not only has that happened, but I think what it's shown the rest of the world is that if you're quality and you're willing to work your ass off and do what you're told and be part of a team, be part of a system, you can double and triple your price tag by going to Leeds United. So, so not only like, let's say Rafinha gets pulled out and gets taken away because somebody offers 120 million, you're kind of dumb to not take that money. And yes, you'd hate to see Rafinha go. But all of a sudden, you're getting future Rafinhas. Yeah. You're getting you future Messi's, future Ronaldo's. that money? Because, yeah. It's crazy. Because they know they – yeah, I could sign for Arsenal I, I and get some playing time or get loaned out. Mm -hmm. Or I could come here and be shaped into the man that I'm supposed to be, the man that, that I can be. And, and it goes back to what Bielsa was saying this week where he said, look, I'm not – I didn't bring Leeds to the Premier League. I'm allowed to coach in the Premier League because of Leeds United. Yeah. And he said, any coach, every manager demands the world. Oh, hey. uh, Minga, hey. Minga. Uh, any coach demands everything of their players. Every coach demands everything of their players. So he's normal in that. The difference is the players. The players have... have made it up in their mind that they are going to give everything so uh oh thank you ken he says yeah. was one for ronaldinho's ronaldinho's i i didn't i didn't know anything about that so rest in peace ronaldinho one of the one of the best footballers of all time as this well. is mother this is mother uh, yes yes I, <laughs> I want to make sure we're not announcing Ronaldinho's dead on I'm, I'm here. Ronaldinho died <laughs> sounds I mean my before this don't mean to complete change subject but apparently Tiger Woods is in some kind of car wreck before we got on here so I don't want to like speculate or anything of like that but anyway continue wow wow um yeah so 
that's Marcelo Bielsa. And when people ask me, like, oh, you're a Leeds United fan, you're a Leeds United fan. I'm a Marcelo Bielsa fan, and I'm becoming a Leeds United spectator spectator fan <laughs> because of the way your club has gone all in with him. They've gone all in with him. And, and your club, no one, no one fan that we talk to, and we talk to a lot of Leeds United fans, and we talk to a lot of fans from all over, every single club bitches about their ownership, bitches about their recruiting, bitches about all the, all the, the office jobs. Nobody, no Leeds United fan currently bitches about that because currently your your office your management is 100% behind like it's a solid vision from the first team down to the like 5 year olds so that's why i said i said early on in the season but you know and i'm an arsenal fan guy is it wolves fan but you guys doesn't matter where you end up this season as long as you're you're not relegated which you won't be um you guys are setting yourselves up for a decade-long run, if not longer. And yeah, that's absolutely. Champions League, that's winning the league, that's Europa League, that that's all the cups. They're not, they're not coming this season. But it's not this season was about staying up and proving that what you're doing is working, and it is. I'm a yeah. I need a beer. Yeah, I well, just I, go ahead. No, I was just saying to that point. I mean, I think what I what really encourages me as a Leeds fan is. The ownership, the money they've got, financial backing from the 49ers. Um, first off, you know, they kind of have an Ohio connection there to begin with. So Leeds loves Ohio, clearly. Or Ohio loves Leeds, the other way around. But, um, no, I mean, I think the really encouraging thing is what, what the 49ers have done is they basically wrote a check and said, this isn't even going to go to the team. This is going to go to help with Ellen Road, like just modernize Ellen Road. It's going to go to the facilities and just make Leeds kind of – transition into life in the Premier League for a long time. And I think you need that. I mean, I think clubs come up and, I mean, we see teams like Fulham, we see teams like West Brom that have kind of like, I'll use Norwich as an example. Like these teams have kind of bounced back and forth, but Leeds hasn't been up here for 16 years, right? Um, I mean, I think that's the really cool thing. I think about the investment they're getting from the 49ers is it's there and it's going to be there for a long time. Like they, they know this club has all kinds of potential. Um, I mean, we know the history of, of Leeds United. Fantastic. That's what I think. That's what I think is really, really cool is what the 49ers have done. And then we'll see. I mean, we'll kind of see what, what kind of investment we'll get, you know, in, in the transfer window this summer to, to strengthen the team. But, I, you know, I think it it really sets up for life after Bielsa because, I mean, I think it's going to be on a year to year basis to what he does because, um, I, I, you know, I, 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 he loves the city. The city obviously loves him. But, uh, you know, I, that's what I that's part of the ownership. I mean, I, I think every Leeds fan loves the ownership and loves the direction of the club right now and it's it's not just for what's on the pitch which is really cool yeah yeah somebody asked uh here if you've seen take us home oh of course oh, you have, right oh. <laughs> there's yeah. like six different documentaries on leeds on amazon so i would yeah. say if you don't know anything about leeds united definitely start there i mean take us home is fantastic um, but there's a lot of other ones that are really good on Amazon too. <laughs> yeah, I like that comment, Chris. Um, <laughs> Leads are like the Rocky movies. Start from the bottom and end at the top. <laughs> exactly. Uh, listen, everybody, uh, don't forget More Rocky two to the end. Rocky <laughs> one, he doesn't end up on top. Right. Fantastic. Um, so let's move into let's move into start uh, talking about. Um, like player ratings and see see how we can rate just about everybody and see how they did. But first of all, if you guys haven't already, please hit that like button. There's more of us in here than there are likes. So if you haven't hit it, you're just kind of anger watching, I guess. Um, <laughs> at least hit the thumbs down button. You know, hit, hit one of the buttons. <laughs> yeah. Let us know you're there. Fantastic. Okay, so let's go. Um, talk to me about Melier. How do, how do you feel Melier did today? Yeah, I thought he looked really, really good. I mean, I think during that Arsenal game, which you probably were delighting in that, I mean, he looked like the youngest starting goalkeeper in the top five leagues in Europe, which he is. So, I mean, we can, we're going to expect this. But the guy has unreal talent. Um, I thought he looked really solid today. Um, I think he's really grown a voice on the team, too, where he's being a little more directive. I mean, I thought his distribution was pretty good today. You know, I, I – I wouldn't call it like an absolute world-class performance, but I would give him an eight absolutely out of 10. I thought he looked really good. 
Yeah. He was as good as he needed to be. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't spectacular. Uh, thank you, Jeff Edwardson. I appreciate the, the two euros. That may translate into... A tip. Yeah, that, that'll get the tip on here. Thank you so much. Check out the Bielsa ball. No, he says the Belisa ball. The Belisa ball. It's okay. That's we'll forgive him because it's a super different chat. We'll, sport, we'll correct it? it. Check out the Bielsa ball podcast on YouTube. Will do, man. We will check it out. Um, Melier, I'm telling you, look at look at uh, the Tottenham match. Tottenham against West Ham last last game, and and look at Hugo Lloris. And look at Melier. Melier is going to take the top spot in France, not not this Euro, but the next world or the next big competition. Melier will be there. Melier will be up there. And um, oh, Neil, don't worry. We'll get we're there. getting to we're getting to that. <laughs> you know, I give I give Melier a lot of grief. Uh, you know, and yeah. I know he's young, but he's 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 prone to to, to mistakes that. I personally can't forgive, but I will say this. He was on point today. Yeah. He played He's very, good. very, very well. And Kyle, I think I would give him the same rating. Yeah. yeah. But you see his confidence going up. And I've said before, uh, Bielsa will give you all the opportunities in the world if you're hustling and if you're working to get better and and correct your mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is exactly what he's doing. He's correcting. He almost overcorrects. So if he has one game where like, he doesn't cover, where he doesn't uh, make his clearances very well, the next game his clearances are great and his, and his goal saving is bad. Uh, you know, if he's bad on the ball one game, the next game he's great on the ball and he makes another, like a throwing error. So he's, he's getting better at, at, he's working harder. Same thing with Patrick Bamford. Bielsa will start them every single, like Bielsa will not bat an eye at starting them. Even no matter how many chances Patrick Bamford misses, no matter how many mistakes Melier makes, because they're working hard in training. Um, and, and, that, and that's what you need. Uh, so so let's work up from there. Let's go uh, back line. We already talked to you, Rente, basically. Um, Hey, Ben Johnson, I appreciate that. American stock and football usually makes me cringe, but you guys are okay. That's all we're going for here is okay. So, we're hey, having, we're having fun we're doing it. We're done. Let's we log like off. It. We like to watch football. We like to talk we're football. Okay. We don't care if we're right, and most of the time we're wrong. Yeah. I'm mostly wrong. Our show is 50% facts and 90% attitude. Cheers to that. That's some solid math. <laughs> uh, and don't forget, guys, if you, uh, Karen C., Mike Pickles, two of our um, Patreon subscribers, these are going to be coming to you guys in the mail. We have stickers. We have on the stoop stickers for you guys to put on your post boxes all over the place and on the tube the next time you get them. So Mike Pickles, um, Karen C., if anybody else, Saul's not on here. But uh, if you guys want to join in, be part of the squad, join our Patreon account for as little as, uh, like, three dollars for as little as a cup of coffee a day you can support two americans who are trying to talk football um and we'll send you a sticker all the way from brooklyn uh and some and some other and good some other stuff. things that we find yo jason stage. robinson i appreciate that 79 cents that's like 40 dollars in american dollars <laughs> um uh fantastic for the price of one chip so let's look at the lineup we talked melier let's talk luke Allen. Let's talk Luke Ayling, former Arsenal boy, but I'm not. I can't even claim him. Claim him anymore. <laughs> I didn't even know he played for Arsenal. Uh, he was in the Arsenal system. Luke Ayling was fantastic today. I thought um, he's to me. He's he's besides Calvin Phillips. Luke Ayling is the heart of your team. I may be wrong once again, but what do you think about that statement? No, I think I think he was pretty good. I, I probably wouldn't go as high as an eight, I would probably say seven for Luke Ayling, just because I think in that first half when they swapped Rafinha back over the right wing, which is where he naturally plays, um, I think kind of Bielsa out of the start was really trying to just attack Bednarak on the left. That's why he stuck Rafinha over there. Um, and I thought he moved him over the right. So, cause we didn't have a left back. I mean, honestly with Pascal Stroik playing over there, we didn't really have a left back. So I thought he moved him over the right to kind of have Ayling get him a little more involved. 
you know, I thought I thought he did pretty well. That Tella guy from from Southampton, I think made. I, I thought they had said that was his debut. I thought he looked pretty good. Um, I thought Luke Ayling did a pretty decent job on him. But you know, oh no, I I would say seven out of Luke. I, I again, he's he's a very very important member of the squad. He's not this uber talented guy. He never will be. But I mean, he fits Bielsa's system. He works really hard, and and I thought he looked pretty decent today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think so as well. Uh, you know, he he's another hard worker. He's he's a fucking he's a scrounger. He he fights yeah. for everything. I was just looking at the at the lineup, and I didn't realize you guys, at least in my Google app, it, mm -hmm. it looks like you guys were a one three three or a three three one. No, four four one one. Four four one one. What? Oh, because Tyler Roberts was right behind. Right, he was right behind Bamford. Which I love. So, so if you were at a four, so Ailing was was in the back. That's, yes. that's what I thought. Yeah. And then I just looked at it, and it was like, no, he was playing midfield. Um, but yeah, yeah, he was fantastic. Let's let's go over to. Um, oh, see, and on here it has pass. It has Stroik. I thought Stroik was in Dallas was a left back, right? Dallas kind of patrols the see, whole midfield. Google, Google, doesn't <laughs> Google, doesn't Google doesn't even know even how care. to deal with your team. <laughs> Yeah, Pascal Stroik was kind of playing like a makeshift left back. I mean, when they went into attack, they more or less just kept three guys back. Um, but, I mean, uh, Pascal Stroik was the quote-unquote left back today. Yeah, yeah. I love it, Mr. Tom. Rafinha punished that poor old center back who was forced to play on the flank. Exactly. <laughs> um, you you got you got to think that uh, freaking uh, Cahill has got to be on the phone with people saying, listen, uh, you're you're about to play Leeds United. Rafinha's gonna do some things to you that you may not like, but it's okay. <laughs> you're good enough. You're smart enough, and gosh darn it, people like you. Uh, because Rafinha is making is making these uh, center backs look silly these days, uh, and I love it. I, I love watching it. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, so let's let's move over to uh, who played alongside of him, Liam Cooper. Coops, Coops, looking good. Everybody giving him a lot of crap in the beginning of the year, but Liam Cooper is is becoming solid and he's becoming more of a leader on the pitch. Yeah, I think the more time he has out there. Uh, <laughs> Jameson, oh dear, it's getting to the point where you lot are starting to understand Leeds more than your own team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you, if we had more Arsenal supporters, maybe I'd you get to start watch watching my own those team. those Wolves games and. We might be commenting on that too. <laughs> uh, but talk to me about uh, your thoughts on Liam Cooper before this match, like like in general in the season, and then tell me about uh, this match in particular. Yeah, I mean, I, he's never really had any kind of experience in the Premier League, so I think to expect him to kind of come in and and be like this dominant figure in the back, you know, it's it doesn't really play into how how he is, and I also think. With the way Leeds play, he's under a lot of pressure every game. Like, they're going to throw everybody forward. They're going to be really open in the back. So it leaves him pretty open. I mean, I thought he was pretty solid today. I mean, what's in reality, like, he's a, he's a championship defender. But because of his voice on the pitch, because of his impact on the team, and I think in the dressing room, you know, that's why he still has got the, captain arm, the captain's armband, and I think he will for, for a while now. Uh, I thought it, as far as his performance today, I thought he was really solid. Um, I didn't see really anything major mistakes-wise. I would probably lean somewhere between that seven and eight for me. You know, again, I don't think anything he did was just like standout wise. And he seems to not be able to convert on any of these Rafinha, you know, free kicks or corner kicks. That's the one thing that's just driving me nuts over the last couple of games. But yeah, I would, yeah. I would say seven. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Alan Swales, wel welcome to the show. He says, uh, my boy. I that's your boy. That's my boy. Uh, I've read Bielsa saying that he wants to create a system so perfect that the opposition can't tell what positions anyone plays. If you can't work it out, he's not far off, dude. And, and you know what? That that's why when when people were saying, "Oh, in January we need a center back. Oh, in January we need uh we need somebody to get on uh, Bamford's ass. You know, we need we need another striker. We need and and true Leeds fans are like. You're not going to sign anyone in January that's going to be ready to go into the lead system, and for for at least a couple months, because because it's not a plug and play, it's not a plug and play system. Uh, it is, yes, you play center back, 
but you're going to need to score goals. You're going to need to provide service. You're going to need to be on the flanks. You're going to actually play uh, CDM for a while. No. You know, like, um, and and that's that's where I'm saying you guys are setting yourselves up for decade a decade long run, if not longer, because you have five year olds, you have seven year olds at Ellen Road these days, uh, twelve year olds that are having to train in the Bielsa system, and. And it and it's he I, I'm sure he ha hates that it's called Bielsa Ball or the Bielsa system because he, he is very very humble. Murder ball. In a way. Murder ball. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you you can't be forcing ten year olds to do murder ball and he's like ah, carajo, carajo. Um, so um, uh, Via Martin says Cooper for a player who is often doubted and only championship level he's kept a few top forward uh premier league center forwards quiet and in his back pocket exactly and that's exactly what uh bielsa says he bielsa says look every time cooper comes into the match he's up against the number one mm. he's up against their number one his job is to contain the number the number one so i'm sorry if he gets beat by jamie vardy i'm sorry if he gets beat by dominic calvert lewin I'm sorry, you know, like if you, if those are the mistakes he's making, they're they're against the top, some of the best, some of the best strikers in the league. It was a bit of poetic justice if if today, to be honest with you, because Che Adams was almost a Leeds player last year, so it was a little bit of poetic justice. Yeah, they, I mean, they wanted this huge price tag for him uh, last year in the winter transfer window. Was I, he wanted to come to Leeds? Um, I think they just wanted way too much money, and honestly, I'm so glad we didn't pull that trigger. But, I mean, he was invisible today. So it was a little bit of poetic justice, I think, for that back line, especially for Cooper, who's been there, um, you know, to kind of get that kind of result and, and really, yeah, absolutely have him in his back pocket. Yeah. So let me ask you guys, uh, as we're, we're going to move on to the next player, but let me ask you, Leeds fans who are watching right now, what does Liam Cooper have to do to make you guys – okay with him like uh, i feel like every match is is like yeah he played well but he he's still a championship player yeah he played well but he's still crap like I, I i don't know what does he have to do so you guys talk about that we're going to move on to the next player on your back line and that would be stuart dallas uh stuart dallas on the back line there i don't know if he was ever on the back line <laughs> <Today>. <laughs> Uh, why don't you ditch Arsenal to come over to the white side? You know you want to. Why don't you ditch Leeds United and go to the and go to the red city blue. side? Yeah, because it's not going to happen. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a, we had an episode last year about uh, you know can, are you allowed to switch clubs? No, you're not. No, you're not no matter allowed. what, you stick by them. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Stuart Dallas. Uh, Stuart Dallas, I'm so happy he still qualifies as a defender because I started him <laughs> in my fantasy team as a defender. So he gets like six points for a clean sheet. He gets, I don't know, 100 points for a goal. I don't know what a defender gets for a goal. But um, but he's going to give me a ton of points there. But Stuart Dallas, another one, like Luke Ayling, works his fucking ass off. Mm -hmm. That dude just works his ass off and then he'll pop up out of nowhere and you're like who took that strike who who was that who just had a shot on the, who the fuck was that oh the left back miss mike pickles dallas mr versatile rob kennedy dallas swiss army knife exactly your, your entire team is fucking swift army knights right i'm sorry kyle if we're we're talking to the these guys as much but <laughs> Listen, you, you haven't ever been on the show, but if you want to get some screen time, you need to talk because I will not. Uh, yeah. Mark's on his fourth sandwich here. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. I will say that. No, I, I mean, Stuart Dallas, I've always kind of compared a little bit to kind of like what James Miller was to Liverpool a couple of years ago, except a guy that's always in the starting lineup. Like he's not, he's, he's that makeshift guy. If you have, I mean, we are at bare bones in my opinion right now as a club. I mean, with Rodrigo out, with Calvin Phillips out, with Pavetta out. I mean, there's a lot of import with Robin Cock out. Like, you have a lot of players that aren't part of this. I'm really, really hoping my man uh, Click is not down for the count today either because that's going to really hurt. But, um, yeah, to me, I think I think Dallas is in running for man of the match. I thought he had the best overall performance of anybody on the pitch. I mean, he does everything. 
should have had an assist in the first half. He kind of patrolled the entire midfield that second half by himself after, especially after Click went down. I think like the 60th minute. So, I mean, Stuart Dallas is is if you want to point it a finger at a guy who literally is the physical embodiment of Leeds, I think that's him. I mean, I thought I thought he he does everything. You tell him to play a position, he does it. Um, you know, I, I I can't say enough about the guy. I thought his performance was as good as anybody today. It's fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Those are big I, words I too. Do, does anybody know if he's from he's from Northern Ireland, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. D- is is Northern Ireland in in the Euro uh, the Euros? I, I don't know if they qualified. That's beyond. Uh, Mr. Tom will tell us at some point. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Tom is our numbers guy. Uh, Leeds have the same number of wins as Liverpool. That's fucking unbelievable. The problem is you guys don't draw matches. Yeah, no doubt. If you drew some of those you, losses, you, only you might be a little higher. You'd be a lot <laughs> higher up the table. Uh, um, fantastic. Um, I, I want to get get to – there was one comment here um, by – Betty's eldest. Uh, I like that name. You're giving big ups to your mom, I would assume. Uh, another great game for Rafinha, but what is pleasing to see is Roberts and Costa with assists, and Bamford and Dallas did amongst the goals. We're gonna we're gonna move up the pitch, but but um, before the match, this guy had had big lofty goals for Tyler Roberts. Uh, I really did. I really and, uh, did. I was calling. He didn't him out play on, bad. He had he had a, he had a game. game. Um, he had a game. He just didn't get it in the net. Uh, Lolo, Northern Ireland is part of the UK. Northern Ireland lost in the playoffs. I know Northern Ireland. Not, I know Northern <laughs> Ireland is part of the UK. Did I say something? I could not. We're not that oblivious. I mean, we can look did at. Did I say a- something contrary? <laughs> no, I only know because my my brother in law is from Dublin, and he lets me know that Northern Ireland is not a part of Ireland. <laughs> no, Us so- Americans might be dumb, but we're not that dumb. I'll say yeah, that. Yeah. We watch football, so we know some yeah. European geography. And uh, it's politics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, there, there, it is. Is. there it is. There we go. Because we need – our director pops that up all the time because we have no idea. When we're like, oh, Leeds United and uh, Brighton, that, that, that's a rivalry, right? They're neighbors. And it's like, oh, yeah. So where's Wales? Mm. I don't know. Well, we go whale watching in Massachusetts. Exactly. You know? And then Newcastle's all the way up there by themselves. Um, anyway, so before we leave the back line, as we're going on our on our um, player ratings, uh, 120 of us watching, guys, thank you so much for the views. If you don't mind, just click that like button because that proves to people who aren't here with us that, oh, this might be something to watch. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll help us buy more black clothing. Um, so before we move on, Simon Swales, so maybe South Wales, I don't know. Simon, maybe man too. Uh, it sounds like a limerick start. Uh, Simon, Simon, Simon Swales. <laughs> he met a friend who went to Wales. He never wales, wears his tuxedo tails. Simon, Simon, Simon Swales. This is the Juan kind of, this is is the kind of thing defender. you tune in for. That, that's what two Mick Ultras do for me. Uh, Juan Bissaka is a great defender. Trent Alexander-Arnold is great going forward. Ailing does a bit of both. Should he play for England? Look, the year, the year TSA, uh, the TSA is having. Um, <laughs> Trent Alexander-Arnold, yeah, yeah. the yeah. year he's having. To me, like, if he's on the England squad, he should be as a midfielder and not a defender <laughs> because the dude cannot defend. Uh, it shows you how much coverage. Virgil van Dyke was doing for him. Um, the other one, Juan Basaka. Juan Basaka to me is good and then disappears for five matches. But James Reeves would punch me in the face if I let us talk any longer about a scum. So sorry, y'all. Can't talk about scum on the show today. Um, I think Luke Ayling, will he get a call up for England? Absolutely not. Does he deserve one? Absolutely. Will he? Not a chance. He's not a. He's not a. He's not a fantasy player, and that's who they're drafting. They're 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 drafting a fantasy squad that gets you points. Luke Ayling isn't getting you assists right now. He's not getting you. Yeah, he has a bunch. He has a bunch of clean. Not a bunch of clean sheets. A handful of clean sheets. But he's not this number. Luke Ayling. 
you don't see in the stats what Luke Ayling does. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? Yeah, Tell yeah, me yeah. in the comments. No, it's not nutmegged a little too often, but uh, he what? He gets oh, nutmegged a little too often. Kind of goes down a little too easy, but he's. I mean, again, fits fits the lead style play. Um, I don't know if we'll ever see a call up, but I mean, the That's guy works saying. his butt off and is a huge part of the team. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Southgate lives near us. We'll go ask him. Go ask him. Uh, Ailing flop. Is that saying he flopped and should have got a yellow card, or he's just he's a flop for he's England? He's a flop for England. I don't think he fits it. Y'all's England national team has more fucking issues. You you guys are like. I don't want to absolutely offend everybody. But you are you guys are one of these where you have too many good players. Look at Leeds United. You have no good players. And you're doing fantastic because you play as a team. You guys are a club before before self. Um, England has too many good Who's that yellow card for me? Talk about England. I'm sorry I got a yellow card. Your turn. I think what he's trying to say is that you have too many stars. And they all want that camera time. They don't all necessarily they don't play, play together. together. They don't play together. That's what I'm getting at. That's why Harry Kane you is terrible. No, that's what he's for trying England. to get at. Harry you Kane know? is terrible. What did Rooney do for England? Fuck off. Whoa. Be careful. Mm. People hate Wayne Rooney. Not offensive that's people. Playing for England. Yeah, and he didn't. Um, he did fuck off. For he, him. from what I've heard, Wayne Rooney likes Grammys. That's what I heard. Somebody told me he, he's way into like banging old ladies. I don't know. That's a completely different show. That's that's what I, I don't know much about it. We we did try to get his address to send him an eight minute ads VHS tape. He wouldn't respond to us. So I don't know. Um, <laughs> no good players. Yes, you have good players, Luke. Relax. Yes, Rafinha is fantastic. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, teams like look at Chelsea. Look at Chelsea. Every single person on the pitch is, is quality, but uh, but they can't play together. They they don't play together. If if a team with as much monetary quality as Lee uh, as Chelsea, Arsenal, even Man United played as a team the way Leeds United played, nobody could touch them. Absolutely Agreed. nobody could touch him. But all these other teams have fucking douchebags who, who are paid too much money. Look at Paul Pogba. Sorry. The only reason I'm talking about scum is because I did call him a douchebag. All right? Relax, guys. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah. If, if, if teams that had on paper quality like man united chelsea arsenal but played the way leeds united played they'd be unstoppable they'd be unstoppable am i wrong no i i i, I could say that a lot. i mean i would think you've got to say that bielsa is a top three coach in the premier league pretty easily but it's the culture it's not necessarily i mean you look at bringing in somebody like Thomas Tuchel at Chelsea, that's not a long-term fix. That's a, hey, we brought in a high-end coach that, you know, is going to come in and make the best because they got rid of Fat Frank. <laughs> Sorry if I offended any England people there, but, you know, he's Fat Frank. England, you know, there's a meme going on on the internet. But anyway, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't see that being a long-term fix. I mean, I don't, I don't think you can look at the Man United situation and say, you know, Ollie's the fix long term either. Um, but uh, ultimately, I mean, I look at the same thing with Leeds. That's why we're trying to do a lot of the same things that these clubs are, is Bielsa's not going to be there forever either. So we're looking, I think that's a huge part of the club right now, is we're looking way past what what we're going to do with Bielsa um, and just setting ourselves up for success in the long run. But yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I look at a lot of these clubs right now and it's just kind of like a caretaker, you know, in there. Um, and they don't really have like a, I would say an envision somebody that has a huge vision for the club or is in there to kind of change the culture. I mean, that's, that's really been the problem in Arsenal for so long, right? I mean, they haven't had really anybody to come in there and, and change that dressing room um, and really change the culture around the club. Yeah. Now, um, Mark, uh, Mark Edison just had a great comment. He said that the league will be dominated in three years by Man City and leads similar ethos and style. All leads we need is a few more quality players. Absolutely agree. The reason Man City can play shitty for half a season 
and most of the season without two of their Best number one players. players is because they have a next man up mentality, just like Leeds United. So, and you know why? Because Pep Guardiola he he wishes it. he was Marcelo Bielsa's son. Um, he he loves Marcelo Bielsa. He loves if if Pep could be any other person in the world, it would be Marcelo Bielsa. Um, <laughs> they they love each other. Um, so just let me answer this question because we got a good fan who comes in here all the time. Peter Vernon, have I missed something, Lolo? How come you're in a pub? Uh, we are actually at Legends because it's a Tuesday. And there's a special match here today, and it was raining today. So we decided to come to Legends NYC. We were thirsty. Um, because it is the number one bar in NYC to, to come and watch football. And, and technically, it's the downstairs part, which is called the Football Factory. You should see the amount of scarves and shit in there right now. Right now, it's crowded with Chelsea and Atletico Madrid fans right now. But uh, I'm going to play for you guys this little intro just to show you because we didn't have any of y'all here for the intro, so here goes. <laughs> So, so that's where we are right now, just to let you know. Uh, we'll be back on the stoop on Thursday for our um, for our, uh, our weekend, weekend watch, list, watch list. Where we pick the, the top three matches that should be on your watch list. Mark picks one, I pick one. We're not allowed to pick our own teams. And then we take uh, votes from the fans, votes from you guys. Go to our Twitter, go to our Facebook. Uh, hit us up on YouTube in the comments. We'll count all of those. Tell us what match we should pay attention to this weekend besides our own teams because we're not allowed to choose. I, I think I already know which one I'm choosing. Here, here's a little uh, – I think I'm I'm definitely choosing West Ham, uh, Man City this week. That is the top of my list. I'm really looking forward to that. I think and West I Ham, I think West Ham could take them. I hope the Irons just take it to them. I think it's I not going to happen, but I, have, I can't yeah. hope. What's going on, Cleveland? How you doing? So don't Willie, forget, we need you in Leeds, Ohio, man. We need we need to get in touch with you. And and guys, um, go to go to Leeds, Ohio on on Twitter. It's at Leeds, Ohio. Show him some love from across the pond. Uh, he, this guy right here is trying to get the the Columbus, Ohio, and Ohio in general, Leeds United support group. So if you know anybody in Ohio, if you know anybody near there, send him some love. Send them some support, all that, because uh, this kid is trying to do is trying to spread the Leeds way, uh, and not only not only Leeds United. This dude is all about Yorkshire. This dude is all about the life. He's all about you people. So, um, so you show us love, show him some love, and show him that you got you got his backing. Yeah, well that. said. Well said. Um, okay, let's move to the midfield. But before we move to the midfield, I want to move to the field in general oh. because my not man oh. of the match. Is there is there something the groundskeeper? Is there something <laughs> called the not man of the match? Would be the pitch. How it's been shitty, and I, I understand it. you guys bought it from Tottenham. That's your own goddamn fault <laughs> for buying anything from Absolutely. the fucking Spurs. But um, you know, it's had some time to set. But then I hear I hear beforehand that it's been raining for a month. Before the match, they watered it. Everyone went out and uh, did their warm up. And then they watered it again. Yeah, that that that, that, bad that for weeks. That field looked awful. It looked like there had been a three day music festival on, and somebody they didn't me. have time to to sod it out. Yeah, you know. somebody tell me what's going on with the pitch because it should be better by now, I would think, right? I think anything associated with London right now, as far as Leeds, is completely cursed. <laughs> because I I don't know if you guys know the stats, so like it's. I try not to talk about it all, but Leeds have not won a game away in London since 2017. So yeah, I, right. I, I associate anything with London right now cursed. Um, so uh, we'll just say the pitch is cursed. But, I mean, we got a result today. But, yeah, guys are slipping all over the place. They have been lately. I know that Bielsa's has talked about it. I know some of the players have talked about it. It's just kind of a, a part of, of really, you know, dealing with the game situation right now. But, no, it's, it's, it's bad. It's really bad. Well, here, here's my thing about it is you, 
I don't understand how you guys are slipping just as much as the other team. Like, it, it should be used as an advantage mm -hmm. by this point. Like, you guys should have been training on it so much that it's an advantage now. Like, but, but you guys were slipping just as much. Yeah. Uh, um, Bamford was taking spills left and right there towards the end of the half. I mean, he was – I think he spent more time on the ground than he did on the ball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my, my, thought it, my thought on it, and I was screaming at the TV downstairs, um, screaming, press the keeper, press the keeper, because he's going to slip. If you just press him and make him use his feet, and, and that's where I was mad at Tyler Roberts. We'll get into Tyler Roberts in a little bit where, where he did have a good match, but I was like – you. you if Bamford's pressing, you need to be up behind him as well to not not give him an outlet. Mm -hmm. Anyway, hold on. Somebody here, somebody here uh, was giving Mark shit, and I always have to highlight a comment when Mark gets shit. So now you guys know how to. It's how, to how do they it. show love toward uh, me. Mark. Your beer looks shit. You need a pint of Yorkshire bitter. Look at this little mini beer. I would, they I would love a pint of, of, of Yorkshire bitter. Uh, so, in fact, I would love two pints. So one for each hand. Unfortunately, you know what that costs here in Manhattan? That's like a like twelve dollar pint. Well, it, twelve for him, twenty he, for me. He got a he got a nine dollar pint, and it's this little mini pint. So if you're truly saying that Mark's beer is shit, put in a super chat. Put Buy in me another one. Put in a ten dollar super chat, and he'll he'll give you ah. beer. That's how, we'll how much shit that two. was. It went down. And uh, <laughs> a, you didn't nipple on that at all. Twenty dollar one will get us shots of tequila. So if you guys want to see us drink oh, a little Jesus. more, please just, <sighs> just start bringing. Can we, them. Can we save that for Friday at when we do our happy potatoes. hour? Not a chance. Don't forget to join us Friday for happy hour as well. As well, where we uh, started, where you can really watch us drink. We start at seven p.m. New York time, and that's midnight Leeds time. That's eleven o'clock your time, Kyle. And we drink. We play drinking games. Yo, we just hit a hundred likes on this stream. Thank you guys so much for that. <coughs> Fantastic. Leads, leads, leads. <clears throat> okay, let's move to the midfield. Midfield. It says Luke Ayling and Stuart Dallas in the midfield. I think, actually, the midfielder that you had there was Pascal Stroik playing CDM, right? So let's He's talk about back. We haven't talked about him yet, though, right? No, no I... I Another one that for me, I you know, I think solid performance, but I don't think anything really was like stood out to me as far as what he did in the game. But I mean, I think Leeds fans, we should all be really, really excited about him. I think he's the center back of the future. I think that, you know, having him kind of involved in the midfield a little bit is going to help him long term. You know, I, I personally hate it when I see Bielsa do that um, just for the current situation. But I will say, you know, I thought Strike put in a pretty good performance. I would rate the whole back line as being solid, so I would give him a seven as well. I know that's kind of boring at this point, but I, you know, I, I, I think a lot of strike. I think again, he's the center back of the future. Just didn't really stand out anything memories wise on me today that that he did. But again, kept a clean sheet. Got to give him props for that. So um, I'm going to go with a seven. About right Seven for Pascal Strike. I, I do. Uh, you know, I, I was hoping that he would get a he would get another header. Hold on one second. What did you guys say? Mark needs to order a bitters. So our Yorkshire fans, bitters. our fans are making fun of Mark for having such a little tiny beer, and they're saying that it's not a Yorkshire bitter. Do you have a Yorkshire bitter? I don't know what that is. Thank goodness. Thank God, because that sounds terrible. Um, I, we'll just do another, another round, round then. Yeah. Do you want to put it in a <laughs> oh no, that's just fine. <laughs> John Smith's is a great bitter. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm not into those. I'm an IPA guy. Uh, oh. Sorry. Oh, what was that, Kyle? Mm. <laughs> Says oh. the guy with no beer. Says the guy with no beer. I mean, I can go pour some some bourbon if we're going to start doing this here. <laughs> Yo, uh, you, you better go do it. Okay, who, who in the comments thinks that Kyle needs to pour himself some bourbon? Let us know. We're going to move on from Pascal Stroik, who I, I thought – I'm I'm a fan of his as much as Leeds United people mm. hate him. I like his haircut. I like I like his eyeshadow. Um, you can tell that I have a daughter, right? <laughs> <laughs> She's a little young for eyeshadow. No, he's got wicked eyes. Like he, he's good. I like it. Um, 
let's move on to Cleish. Uh, Cleish, who came off injured, right? He, he was subbed yeah, He was for, grabbing his lower back. Yeah. He was subbed for Hernandez, right? Uh, uh, yeah. No, Pablo. Pa actually, I think Alioski is who. Alioski is who came, came on. on for, hmm. Yeah, definitely came on for Cleish. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna knock on wood on Click not being hurt here because I think I think if he goes down, we're I mean we have zero depth at central midfield if he's down. Um, you know, I thought he put yeah, it. That's, you know, just, that's just the last thing you guys would need right now. No, oh, can't deal with it. I mean, I I thought Click did pretty well. I I thought his movement was well um, in the sixty minutes roughly that he was in. I know he missed a really really big opportunity kind of on a direct pass over to Rafinha, I think in the first half. Um, I, I couldn't help but think at that time, I was like, if Calvin Phillips was in, we probably would have converted on that one. But, you know, I, I, I Click's a huge part of the team. I think he's kind of had to play a little bit out of position at times just because of how much makeshift the squad's been. But I thought, again, put in a pretty decent performance today. Um, I probably wouldn't go super high as like, as like I had with Dallas. I mean, I would probably put him in that six to seven range. Um, this is a very good point in this comment. I mean, Thank it is you. only, it is well, not even six o'clock yet. More of a four girly o'clock today. So this, I gotta, I gotta say somewhat there. sober. <laughs> <laughs> um, but look, Kyle, it says get a beer, Kyle. 100%, oh. Kyle. Four o'clock. All right. It's four o'clock and Leeds play. Did, did you see this comment? Is Kyle even a Leeds fan? That's what I saw. It's, <laughs> he's lucid, sober, and no chairs have been thrown. <laughs> I haven't punched anybody either, so that's always a good sign. What happened to win or lose, Leeds booze? Right? Okay. Uh, you see, people getting too too used to James here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. we, need, we need weekend fixtures back so bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but listen, uh, let's take some of these comments on Cleesh. Um, Cleesh needs a break. Cleesh is too slow. Cleesh has been awful the past few weeks. Mm. Uh, I think it's breakfast time in Ohio. Wait, that's not. Um, <laughs> Cleesh actually um, sent that. So ho hold on. Emily Heskey. Welcome to the show, Emily Heskey. Uh, don't think any Leeds fans hate Stroik. What the fuck? Um, they don't. I, okay, not hate, but but we do see that he gets a lot of crap uh, when he was first being brought on. Him and Liam Cooper mm -hmm. were getting a lot of crap because I think you guys started the season wanting really bad for Robin Koch and Llorente to be your, your back too. And then you get these two guys. And they trust me, they've been getting a lot of shit. But these may be the plastic fans that you guys are talking about. Mm -hmm. Once again, I'm only seeing what people post on our on our videos and things like that. Uh, yeah, I think. <laughs> why is Mark drinking from a kid's glass? They keep I fucking have with him. No idea. They heard he's a Wolves fan, and they just keep fucking. I would with fuck him. with me if I. <laughs> My comment on that from Stroik, though, I would say I think people get like me I, I, when he's lined up in midfield. It's just it's just not his natural position. I think that's that's the frustration, but at the same time, like when he was moving Calvin Phillips to center back and kind of bringing Stroik up, that's when I was like, all right, we this, we got to figure something out here. But I mean, Stroik is a player again. I, I think he's the center back of the future. I think he's got a lot of talent. I think he's young. Like he didn't really play a ton last year, so him kind of getting thrown to the fire this year has been, you know, I I, th I think he's done a really really good job. I, I don't I don't know any Leeds fans personally that hate Stroik or think he shouldn't play. I think it's just when he gets thrown in midfield, it gets a little dicey because he's just not the same as Calvin Phillips. But I mean, who is? Like, there's not a lot of guys that, that are going to fill that role the way he does. So, yeah, and and you know what? He's proving better with his head, like scoring goals. Uh, Y'all's corners have have been y'all's corners have been a bit better because both him and Liam Cooper are in there. They're in the mix. They're in the mixer there. In Rafinha. And, well, Rafinha dropping them in. Yeah, he dropped it in a bucket, seems like, every time now. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Strike seemed a bit hot-headed in the match against Liverpool, but has come a long way. Will make a good center back and willing to get forward. Look, I, I think you guys, you guys are once again. If it, the amount of injuries that you guys have to to big to y'all's big name players is astounding. Like the the fact that you you've had Calvin Phillips as a center back, you've had Luke Ayling as a center back, you've had Stuart Dallas as a center back. That. Uh, 
like the fact that you are where you are uh, in the table, which is ahead of Wolves, ahead of Arsenal for now. <laughs> You've got more hope than I do. Um, that's all I have. <laughs> I just have winnable fixtures. I will say that. Like the next, the next five games, I, I believe are all winnable, and then we go Manchester City, Liverpool, Manchester United, back to back to back. So we got a month to kind of get stuff sorted out, get guys healthy, and just I think have a go at those three teams, and I think see where we end up. Um, you know, see where the cards fall here. Yeah, this Liverpool team you speak of, are they any good? I've never heard of right them. now. Ooh. I've never heard of this team. Do they even have any good players on their team? What is this? Levar Pool? I hear they got a couple of Chelsea, a former Chelsea players. <laughs> they might be okay. Um, yeah. Uh, welcome, nudes of the world, erotic drawings. Hmm. We'd like to hear more from you. Um, seeing Llorente play was a booster. Agreed. Fantastic. Seeing him play for 90. Right? He was in for the full 90, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, Rente, Rente played 90 minutes, yeah. Yeah, especially seeing him play for 90 minutes. Fantastic. Um, agreeing that Ailing and Phillips are being put around, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, it's foiling consistency, yeah. Um, who's farted? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, that's a weird comment. Um, so guys, we got 125 of y'all. Make sure if you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, put it on Twitter because for some reason our Twitter account got flagged today <laughs> because I talked shit about VAR. I think it might have been nudes of the world, erotic drawing. It wasn't. It wasn't. That's even fine. All the nudes that I post of myself, those are fine. But I post one thing saying VAR is wrong for the penalty. I didn't get a red card. Twitter got a red card. Did I just get red carded? Was I that have me? no idea. Just don't, I don't know anymore with these refs and VAR. Uh, these refs, man, they're fucking terrible. I posted something about that not being a penalty, and I just recorded the screen and I sent it, and we got kicked off of Twitter. Um, Teller yeah. should have been booked for that too. I mean, that was that was a exactly. joke that he was not booked. How was he not booked for that? I, I have. I mean, those are those are abysmal. Like how Teller was not booked for that. But yeah. that's prototypical in the books of what diving is and should have been booked immediately. So actually not talking shit about VAR, talking shit about, no, I mean, VAR actually worked exactly how it should have, which is the ref saw something, he called it, and then they went and checked it out and they went and they looked at it and it was all good and it was done. So so I agree, Mr. Tom, VAR actually had a decent night. Okay, let, let's move on. We were at strike, we're moving on to, um, no, we, we were at cliche. Cliche. So let's go to our front four. Let's start with Jackie Boy. Uh, Jackie Boy, something's up with him, huh? Yeah, I not, a, so. not a great performance. I I would say five today. I thought he was he was. But the a past two matches, he's been subbed off. Yeah, I, I, and the weird thing is, everybody. I thought Elder Coster was on the out. I mean, there was a lot of talk in the winter that he was going to get moved. I think in January, I thought Elder Coster put in a fantastic day of work today. In, in 45 minutes, he was on. I thought he was awesome. I, I just thought Jack Harrison was a little invisible in that first half. I thought I thought Bielsa moved him at the exact right time. Um, you know, and I. I I think he was maybe a little bit out of position in the first half as far as, I mean, they flipped the wings. I don't think they could really get settled in those first 15 minutes. And I think when they actually got settled around uh, with Rafinha back on the right, then I think they got things going around. But yeah, Jack was, Jack was a bit invisible today. Um, not a good, not a good day of work. And hopefully he can kind of get this cleared up because I think he's going to be vital kind of coming forward in you know, the later half of the season here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just a little bit worried here that Sport Billy may be one of our first fans to get a card because he <laughs> talked about the New York Islanders. And uh, I don't know if you know, but our director is a diehard uh, a Rangers, Rangers fan. fan. So wow. at, least he, at least he didn't say Penguins or, or um, uh, Flyers, Flyers or no Bruins especially. So you, may, you haven't got a card yet, so you're okay. Oh, he's trying uh, to you find talked, it. You talked about hockey, so I think that, that makes you good in his book. And, and the fact that you're watching in the UK, ah, there, there you go. Is. We knew he was searching for some sort of graphic. <laughs> he's a hardcore Rangers fan. Um, um, yes, yeah, so I got to stop reading these. Um, yeah, Jackie Boy didn't have a great game. 
um, and was subbed off again. But you know what? He'll start again. He'll start again, and he'll give he'll be given another shot. So let's go to Mr. Tyler Roberts. Now, can can you believe it? But this guy over here, before the match, said Tyler Roberts two goals. I saw the lineup. I liked him behind uh, Bamford, and I I did think he would do something, and he did. He missed he 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 missed two, just like Bamford would. That's not Bamford. doing something. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's not doing something. Hey, he had an assist. He had an assist on the uh, was it was it the Bamford goal? He had the assist on. I think I think he did have the assist on the Bamford goal. Yes. Yeah. So he did something. Um, yeah. I, I I liked what he what he did last week and obviously earned him a uh, you know uh, the start. So I I I think I like what I see with Leeds with him and the uh, you know up front and what he adds to the offense. Maybe I'm wrong because I don't know anything. It, to me, all Tyler Roberts adds is a hunger and, a, and an excitement. When okay. He, when he plays, he's hungry and excited, and yeah. he knows, like, one good performance could get me in the starting lineup next week, and which it has. I mean, it's got, yeah. him, it's got him in the starting lineup. Um, so I want to ask you, Kyle, do you think Patrick Bamford benefits from having a center attacking midfielder right behind him like Tyler Roberts, or is – He's stealing thunder or Bamford had a really good game today. Yeah, I, I would I mean I still think obviously Rodrigo is is the natural fit there. I mean Rodrigo's super quality. I don't even think we've seen the best of Rodrigo this year, even when he was healthy. Like I, I don't I think there's a lot more that we can get out of him. Uh, you know, I thought Tyler Roberts put in a pretty good day at work. I, I think that like last week they almost had him lined up as another striker up front. Um, today he was more of like a central forward or, or more of like an attacking midfielder role. Yeah, I thought his movement was good. Again, that pass from Rafinha definitely should have converted that one. Um, I thought that was – we had we, – we need. I thought we needed that one really bad. But, you know, another guy, again, was kind of on the outs, I think, in the wintertime. I think there was a lot of noise coming from the lead side that he might get moved in the winter transfer window. Um, that didn't happen. I'm really, really thankful to obviously have him because the squad depth is just so depleted right now. So, yeah, I mean, a, a guy we really, really need. I think a guy that we really need quality minutes from um, coming up in the next couple games where, you know, I think we need some assists. We need some goals out of him. We need that really, really good movement to kind of come in and get one of those low balls across from Rafinha and hopefully Jack Harrison can find that too. Um, but, I, you know, I thought he was – I thought he did well today. For me, I thought it was more of like a six to seven performance. I don't think there was anything that was just wild by, but I mean, I, I think that, you know, overall, maybe I'm just giving everybody really low scores today. I don't know, but I, I thought, I thought he was decent. I, I wouldn't call it great, but I thought he was decent. Yeah. He did his job. I thought, I thought yeah. he, he definitely had some chances that he could have, he could have, uh, <clears throat> he could have made something out of, but he didn't. But you know, he's young and he's excited and he's playing. To me, his touch was better today. Yeah. Um, his, his first touch has been the issue for me. Um, <clears throat> and still, when he gets the ball, when he gets a chance to put a shot in, it's like he just gets so fucking excited. He gets so fucking excited, and and he skyrockets it, and you can see it when it comes to him. He goes, nobody's around. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna get to hit this. Here it goes, as opposed to the calm that like Rafinha has or somebody, you know, yeah. not trying yeah. to compare the two. But once he gets, and and that all comes with playing time, you know, he he'll he'll have the calm when the ball comes to him because he won't be like, oh, here's my one shot. Right like Eminem throwing up on his sweater, you know, like he's, that, that's basically what's happening. Yeah. Somebody smoked the weed in the bar. I think the guy that was just walking by was smoking. The, through the window, we just got a whiff of weed. That's how strong like it NYC. is. That, that's a like, blunt right there. Like uh, I mean, one more note I would say on, on Tyler Roberts, like another guy that's not played at this level ever. And another, like, like I just saw a comment, he is a really, really young player. Um, you know, I think a guy that we kind of looked at the beginning of the season that probably wasn't, you know, ready for this type of squad, that that's why they went after a guy like Rodrigo. And we were really depending on Rodrigo to be kind of that, you know, focal point up front um, and also give some depth, obviously, behind Bamford. But, yeah, I mean, I think we give him a little more time. Um, I'll be curious to see what they do with him in the summer because I think that central midfield is going to get addressed 
immediately um, in the offseason. I think that's the biggest need on the squad right now, that and left back. But, yeah, you know, I I think we probably need to be a little more patient because I think we're going to see a lot more Roberts in the coming weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Peter, Peter just literally just commented, the slippery pitch could work for us if we play accordingly. That's what I was saying. Like, yes, the first day it went in, um, I forget who you were playing, but both the both teams were going sliding all over the fucking place. But I'm like, now you you've had it for a few weeks now. You guys should be using it to your advantage, knowing that it's slippery. Um, anyway, yes, Tyler Roberts is getting better, and and I agree. He he doesn't he doesn't play for any other team if he's in the Premier League right now. No, I mean maybe no, like no. Newcastle. West Brom's awful, so maybe West Brom, we're... Sheffield United needs some sort of attack, uh, maybe. So uh, le- let's go next up, Mr. Rafinha. Mr. Rafinha. Uh, Mr. Rafinha, is there much to say about him? Um, I mean, how 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 can he be any better on his free kicks and and corner? I thought he actually missed a couple too. That's the funny thing. Yeah, like, yeah, was, I know. But you're expected to miss yeah, every now and then. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think you got to give him a ten because I feel like every time he gets the ball, you're just waiting for that kind of level of magic. I honestly kind of equate it to if you guys remember like old school. Well, I know this will offend you, but old school like Gareth Bale, original at Tottenham. Like when he got when he got the ball, like he just would go bag a winner. I'm not saying Rafinha does that, but like Rafinha, every time he gets the ball, you just kind of like you know, gasp a little bit. Was, we're going to see yeah. something pretty cool happen. Um, you know, that free kick was awesome. I think that like that he, I should say he scored on, but I mean, he put a couple more in literally on a platter for, for guys on, on some set pieces in that first half too, that I think we should have scored on. So, I mean, you can't say enough about Rafinha. I'm not going to jinx it, but I, I'm going to enjoy him while we got him. Cause I don't know how, I don't know how things are going to shake up, but I mean, what a steal though. Like yeah. you literally can't say enough about the guy. Cause he has worked. He turned down Champions League football to play at Leeds, and he turned it down for a pretty low fee. I mean, Leeds got him for a bargain. Um, I mean, what a guy! I I would I would give him a ten just because you kind of get obsessed with a guy. He is he is Yorkshire Neymar, but you know I I thought he put in another really good performance today. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Mr. Tom. <laughs> so sorry, I we haven't popped it up on the screen, but Mr. Tom. Uh, oh, always a laugh with you. If I caught Rafinha in bed with my wife, I'd ask him if he wanted a sandwich and apologize for interrupting. <laughs> get him, get him a glass of milk too while you're at it. Just let him get him comfy. Wow, <laughs> wow, <laughs> fantastic. Um, and someone else, Joel, said Rafinha 10. Next, the only reason I would say not a 10. Because I'm holding him to his standards. If I'm holding him to other player standards, then yeah, sure, 10. But I'm holding him to his standards. The things Rafinha is thinking about, will think about later tonight, besides Mr. Tom's wife, is um, the one-on-one with the keeper that Mm -hmm. he got caught by Romeo. That's what he's going to be thinking about. He had tons of opportunities to shoot. And he, he was just looking for something else, something we won't know. Something went on in his head that he didn't shoot at the right time. It could have been 5 6 nil if he converts on half of it. And, really and then you're, you're right. He had a couple of free kicks that just weren't – they weren't tens. Well, I, saw, I, 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 I seem to remember – and a half. I seem to remember one that just put he put way too much leg in. You know, I think it was in the first half, and it just, like, cleared everything. I think yeah. that was planned, actually. I mean, I think they were trying to get Jack Harrison a little more involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were trying so. to get on his left foot. I actually thought that was a little more planned. I thought his poor ones were a little bit in that second half kind of early on, but yeah. I thought he was brilliant. Um, Richard Richard Wakeman says uh, ex- exactly there, Simon. He has to finish the one-on-one to get a 10. Um, Richard Wakeman says Rafinha's work rate in games for a Brazilian is awesome. And here, here's the thing. Any other Brazilian 
and let me know if I'm wrong, entire country of Brazil. But any other Brazilian goes down in the box in the first half with that, with with that sliding challenge that he stepped over and tried to continue the play. Mm -hmm. There could have easily been a penalty for Rafinha in the first half, easily. Yeah. Uh, anyone else would have dragged their foot. We were discussing how anyone else would have just all you had to do was let the guy hit you and Rafinha jumped over him mm -hmm. so and any other brazilian would have fallen down and rolled for 10 minutes <laughs> about how big of a penalty that was he he did it, which which makes Rafinha even fucking better in my mind even fucking better so and my pickles, I don't know if Rafinha gets into the fucking Brazilian team because they're weirdos too. <laughs> he's got to. I, mean, I know he to. should. He's got to. I mean, the guy's brilliant. I, I think he's going to be a household name like one of these big – I mean, I think he's going to get thrown in with the Neymars, the Ronaldos, the Messis. I, I think that highly of him. I mean, I think he's he's not there yet, obviously. Oh! He's outside. Oh! Outside. Outside. Sorry. Oh, that was a Giroud hell of a, a bicycle there. Giroud just scored a bicycle kick goal way outside. Oh, so, that is unfortunate. Um, uh, it's a score in there. Sorry, everyone. It's, nil, nil. it's like literally right here. We've got like a 12 foot TV right in Oh, front of my us. goodness. It's way outside. It's nil nil. Oh. Uh, and I don't want to talk about Chelsea, but I love me some Giroud. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so, everyone loves it. So next up is uh, Patty Bamford, Mister Patty Bamford. Yeah, I, I, I would say eight and a half, nine range. I mean, the guys, nobody expected this. So I mean, I think I think to to bag another one today. I mean, you got to give him props. That's kind of his trademark move too. When he gets on his left and either crosses you up, you know, crosses the keeper up, you know, to hit on the right, or he just absolutely smashes one top left corner. Um, I mean, Bamford is is awesome. England, you'd be doing everybody a disservice if you didn't call him up. I would say that too. Like Bamford's got to get a call up. I think, in my opinion, um, you know, I, I would say I would say eight and a half nine today for me. Um, I mean, again, bagged another goal. Guy's been a. He, I think he is why Leeds are where they're at. I mean, he's he's he came from the beginning of the season to maybe not even having his position or being a little bit on the outs of you know that's why we kind of brought Rodrigo in is everybody thought that he was gonna probably take Bamford's spot. Can't say enough about him. Bags another goal. I think you got to give him kind of eight and a half nine today. Um, put in a really good performance. Yeah, <laughs> I I would I would give him a nine myself. Uh, I think this. Uh, outside of his hat trick is probably the best I've seen him play uh, since I've been following Leeds. You know, I, I really do. I think he was, I think he was playing very smart. I think his head was was not just where he was supposed to be, but was aware of what everyone else was doing. And you don't see that whole lot with Patty Bamford. Yeah, yeah, he was good. No, his hold up play is getting great. Alan Sales Bamford can marry his daughter. Uh, somebody said. Rafinha should impregnate all the women in Leeds. That's a busy week. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. JB says, I'd marry Rafinha. Uh, Alex says, Rafinha is what it's all about. Uh, we would put Rafinha on the show. Yeah. And if you're listening out there, Rafinha. I think I think he's doing other. He's saying English lessons, so we might have to have a translator on that. Sorry, guys. It looks like the scum have scored. They they they're just, gonna put it to they're putting it to VAR and it clears. They get, was that what that was for the bicycle kick? No, I don't. No way. It took them that long. Oh, I guess so. You guys are hearing Chell scum right now talking. It was. Yeah, it is. How, how, how is that not offside? How is that not offside? Yeah, it took him that long to decide on whether or not Jeru's goal was good. He looked offside, but then Atletico kind of uh, steps out to give him the room. So I guess that's what they were looking at. Who knows? But the goal itself is gorgeous. It's a great bicycle kick. It's a bicycle kick. Good. Um, 
Okay. Um, shit. It just makes me mad hearing all these Chelsea fans behind me. I feel like I feel like they're feel gonna like sneak up on them with a soft dildo. Um, I'm not even sure what that means. But I don't. I don't either. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that gets everybody. Um, and now, finally, for uh, player rating, manager rating, uh, Marcelo Bielsa. Marcelo Bielsa, let's rate his, his lineup, his initial lineup, and his changes that he made at what time he I, made them. I go 10. I go 10 because I'm I, – I, 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 I I initially wanted Alioski in at left back. Uh, I, I thought it was cool that he got Lorente. That was actually Lorente's home debut. So it's really cool that he got that uh, involved in, in the game. But I initially wanted Alioski on the left. I wanted to kind of set up a little more naturally. But, I mean, I thought it was brilliant. He made that – I think the change at half was the whole game. I mean, bringing Elder Koster on, I thought whatever he said at half um, really got the boys fired up. I think that was – I think he made the adjustments that he needed to make. I thought after that first 15 minutes, I thought we we were in for a rough night. Um, the lad settled down. I I, I mean, Bielsa is awesome. I, I think you got to give him a 10. I thought it was brilliant tonight. You know, typical Bielsa performance where he just made the adjustments when he needed to, and and you know, the lads bought into it. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, not much more to say about that. They also, you know, the guy knows what he's doing. Mr. Tom gave him a 432. Um, so just to quickly rate the substitutes, we had Helder Costa, we had Alioski, and we had Mr. Pablo. I thought they all came in and did their jobs. That's exactly um, what Helder, they were supposed to do. Helder Costa ha gets a lot of crap, and he has been getting a lot of crap, but the past few matches, as a substitute, he has a couple goal, you know, a goal, a couple of assists. He's He's been a difference maker, and I yeah. and I think uh, what I've been hearing from, from Leeds fans was we have no quality off the bench. There's nobody you can bring on that can change the game. You know, Pablo ha has a ton of great passes in him, and Helder Costa, he's quick and tricky. And so when he was not playing well, yeah, he's he doesn't give you anything to come on. But but lately he's been pretty fantastic coming off the bench. So Yeah, I think it really goes with Helder Costa's work rate. I mean, I think he got brought in as this big technical player that was going to lock down the wing, and as soon as they brought Rafinha in, I mean, <laughs> you knew that was inevitable that he was going to take a spot. But – Elder Cost is all about his work rate for me. I mean, I thought he came in, put a really good days of work or a day of work in. Um, I thought his work rate was was the whole story of the game. That one where Bertrand was he was kind of chasing Bertrand out on the right, um, and he just straight up beat him to the ball. Um, mm -hmm. That comes to mind. I thought Pablo Hernandez. The thing I think that everybody should realize about Pablo Hernandez. I mean, he was brilliant last year. I don't think we've seen Pablo Hernandez fit all no. year. So I think when you actually see him fit, and that that might be because age, we may never see him fit at all again. I mean, Pablo Hernandez is brilliant. Pablo Hernandez kind of pulled us up by our bootstraps and put us in the Premier League this year. Um, like, it was what he did after the restart. Um, you know, I, I, I think that he put in a good day's work. I, I don't I don't really have anything that comes to mind about Alioski's performance today. I mean, he was on the pitch for not really that – actually, he was the longest out of any of the subs uh, other than Costa. But I, I don't remember him being a huge part of the game, but I, I think every Leeds fan is obsessed with Alioski with just – the off the field antics that he does and some of the field or on, on field antics he does like the yeah, Pepe yeah. incident. But uh, you know, I think all the subs, good days of work. I, I would I would give Elder Costa an eight today. I would give Pablo a seven and I'd probably say, you know, Alioski around a six, just because I don't really have anything I recall he did. He Alioski came in and did his job. He did yeah. his job as a defender, which is what you you know, Alioski's one of these I mean he wears your number ten. Sure. <laughs> um, but he came in and what he was needed to be was a defender mm -hmm. and he, and he did his job. So, um, yeah, we, we've been asking them to turn this shit off, this Chelsea <laughs> match off and they just, it happened. It just I, I guess it's important. I don't know. Don't Everybody know needs to accept the Leeds takeover though. It's coming. <laughs> Everybody's ready for it. It's, 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 you just got to accept it. I mean, it's contagious. Okay, guys, um, so we've hit the full 90 minutes. We've done our full 90 minutes, and we've done our four minutes of uh, stoppage time. So we're about to uh, 
Yes, Mr. And, there, and there's no one to sub us out. <laughs> Granny Val gets a six million out of ten for giving birth to the person who gave birth to Calvin Phillips. Uh, indeed. So now the the last thing we need you guys to do in the comments, um, don't forget, please like, hit that like button. It means a lot to our channel. Um, hit the subscribe. It means a lot to us. And now give us our player ratings. So for Lolo, Mark, Kyle, and our director. What are our player ratings for this 90 minutes that we just put in? Because you know what? We also haven't peed in 90 minutes, and we've been drinking a lot of beers. So the only reason we're in the show is because said, both of us no, have to pee. No one subs us out. We do this from, from whistle to whistle. And some for some reason, I have to pee really bad, so I, I drink more. It just doesn't, doesn't work. So give us our player ratings out of 10. What do you say we did? I like that no comments are coming in because they're just not rating us. They're breaking uh, up. Hey, uh, hey, 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 fuck Chelsea. Oh, Chelsea. <laughs> he doesn't even speak English. He said, put Chelsea. I love it. Uh, Lolo, Mark, and Kyle, 10 out of 10 all day. Hey, yeah, there boy. we go. There you go. Cheers. Cheers, uh, man. Uh, Karen gave us gave us an eleven out of ten. On a scale of one to potato, you were mashed. Fantastic! I love mashed potatoes. Uh, Au gratin would have been better because cheese is just nine for Lolo, five for Mark. Five, five. Well, I guess I just need to improve. You, you, you got those girly beers. I don't know what you're drinking. So. Kyle gets a one out of ten for zero. But, but he gets a 9 out of 10 for insight, and that was what we have him on the show for. Add him up. Add him up. Um, Lolo, 7 for good knowledge, but Arsenal and needs a top nine. All right, I'll take a 7. I'll take a 7. Uh, Roger Black says, 100 out of 10 for all of you. Uh, we'll hey, take Roger it. Black, thank we'll you guys very it. much. Uh, 9.5. Huh. On the Richter scale. a little scale. Let down there. <laughs> I don't know why. Mark, five, very quiet. <laughs> Needs to I'm drinking the Smithix. I love it. I like the Smithix. Um, and if any of you guys want to help us pay our beer tab, please just buy a super chat sticker. Something, any, whatever it like is that. you need to do. Beers are ex expensive in this part of New York. Yeah, but in all honesty, we're probably just going to leg it. We are close to the door. <laughs> Shout right. out to my man, Alan. Uh, yeah, Alan, it's, yeah, we're not going to like it. No, we got to come back here. Uh, Alan, great fun time with you as well, man. Uh, great having great having Kyle on the show. Let's get these last comments before we get in. Mr. Tom, 46 top knots out of 48 top knots. That's not too many top Mark knots. Mark gets a two because of the size of the glass. <laughs> Blame the waitress. <laughs> Mark gets is scored down because of last Friday. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. Kyle gets I'll a 100 it. out of 10 for being a Yorkshire legend. Nice. Mark, 4 out of 10 for drinking beer-colored water. Ah, you cheater. <laughs> no, this is the real deal today. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. It's been a ton of fun talking to you guys. And um, can't wait to get back here to Legends, to the Football Factory, when it's packed and crazy with Leeds United oh, fans. There's a chance we come here on Saturday for We're Aston not going to get them up here, but but we've got to thank Jack for this. Yeah, one. thank you so much, Jack. You've been in there. Woo! Um, but thank you so much. Uh, when's last orders? Last call? Last call is not for like Eight 10 hours. more hours. <laughs> it's only 4.30 right now. Oh, geez, that's um, almost 12 hours. But yeah. thank you, Kyle, so much. Yeah, Don't cheers, forget thank you. to Ohio. And show them some love from across the pond. Yeah, please do. All right. And yes, Mr. Tom, the show is always better after a win. So if you wonder why I'm a Leeds United kind of fan, it's because you guys are always a lot more fun when you win. All right. Uh, thank All right. you guys Thanks so for much. Having us, Peace, everyone. guys. Peace. From the Football Factory.